Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here today. I am really excited today to talk to you about something a little different than what I usually cover. This is a plastic surgery called blepharoplasty. For those of you who are not familiar with blepharoplasty, it's a plastic surgery to correct the eyelids. So it can be upper eyelids or lower eyelids. Usually it'll be used if you have too much eyelid and your eyelids start drooping over your eyes or you have a big bump um, in your lower eyelid and you just want to correct that. Its main goal is pretty much it gives you a lift. So the lift also goes all the way to the eyebrow so it really lifts up and opens your, um, opens your eyes, opens your gaze. So you look a lot more awake than you did before. So the concept of this surgery is that the surgeon is going to go in with a scalpel and cut out a piece of your eyelid. So like I said, either upper or lower eyelid. And then he's going to suture back your eyelid so that you just have uh, like an amount less in your eyelid. The mass of your eyelid is diminished and now your eyes are much more open and you actually have a double eyelid. You don't have a single eyelid. The problem with drooping eyelids is that you can only see the eyelid that doesn't move, the, the one that's pretty much there all the time. You do not have the mobile um, eyelid underneath. Ever since I was a teenager, I felt like something was off with my eyes. I wasn't sure if it was the shape of my eyes because I have eyes that kind of go downwards a little bit. Um, I didn't know if they were a little too close together, a little too far apart, but I just felt like something was off. But since I didn't really know what the problem was, I didn't know how to correct it. I found out that blepharoplasty existed about two years ago. I remember I was reading an article and it was about a lot of women who had um, undergone this plastic surgery. And when I saw the before and after pictures and I looked at myself in the mirror, I understood that maybe the thing that was bothering me about my eyes was that my eyelids were starting to droop onto my eyes. And every time I tried makeup tutorials, it never looked like the finished look of the person who was doing the actual tutorial. This is when I decided to call a plastic surgeon in the Ken area. So this is in South of France because I was living in South of France at the time and decided to go for a first consult. My first appointment with this plastic surgeon was during the month of October, 2022. The first consult is pretty much you go, you ask if you are a candidate for this type of surgery. So he immediately looked at my eyelids, the, the mass of eyelid that I had, the density of it, and he immediately confirmed that I was a candidate for this surgery. During this first appointment, he's also explaining to me the risks. The most common complications or side effects that you can have from this surgery are milia, which are little white, um, I think they're like little grease buttons or bumps that you have under your eyes. Usually you get them if you apply too much moisturizer, I think it clogs the pores and it creates milia around your eyes. You can go to your dermatologist to get rid of them. It also could have the effect of the dry eye syndrome. Uh, your eyes are just constantly dry and itchy and stingy and you have to put drops in them very frequently. The last complication that he spoke of was pretty much taking out too much of the eyelid. By doing that, your eye will not be able to close completely and of course that is extremely problematic. The blepharoplasty surgery is actually so common nowadays that I remember my surgeon asking me if there was a specific date I wanted to get my surgery on and he had said, don't worry, this is such a common surgery and it goes so fast that I can literally squeeze you in uh, between two surgeries. So usually the surgery can can be up to one to three hours. Three hours is uh, most likely if you're doing upper and lower eyelids. I only wanted to do upper eyelids. He confirmed that my lower eyelids did not need any touching up at all. 
So I was happy because I knew it was gonna be a very short surgery. After this first consult, needless to say, I was so excited about this surgery. I was ready to book my surgery date immediately because he had just reassured me so much on how easy the procedure was, how, you know, it was really rare to have complications and how he was actually encouraging a lot of his patients to do it and a lot of older people as well to do it because with age, um, you just have droopy eyelids and considering it's so easy, and I will talk about the finance after, but it's not a very, very expensive surgery. So it's definitely something um, to do if you are considering opening up your gaze a little bit. The goal of the surgery is for it to be extremely natural. The surgeon told me, your friends, when they see you, they won't say, oh my God, you, you did something to your face. The goal is for them to just be like, wow, she looks like she got a very good night's sleep. After my first consultation, the next appointment I had before my surgery, which was scheduled for a month later, was at the clinic that I was getting the surgery at with the anesthesiologist. So this is pretty much a standard um, appointment. They just go over your allergies. They go over if uh, you smoke, if you drink, uh, what you're going to have to do before the surgery to prepare. So the type of medication you're gonna have to take. They recommended homeopathy to me to help reduce the swelling, reduce the redness of my eyelids right after the surgery. I think I had to start taking homeopathy like five days prior to the surgery, which was going to prepare the body uh, to fight against the swelling and the redness. It was nice to have that appointment at the clinic I was going to get the surgery at because it allowed me to kind of locate myself. I can't imagine going to that surgery the morning of, you're already stressed out, and on top of that, you don't know where the, the clinic is, how the clinic is um, inside, and where to go on that morning of the surgery. You just have so many things to think of that at least getting that out of the way was nice. Right before my surgery, which was on November 25th, 2022, I remember um, I think 24 hours before I had to do the nasal test test to make sure I was okay. Um, I also had to stop eating. I believe it was 12 hours prior to uh, the surgery time. So I just stopped eating. I think it was like 8 p.m. the night before. My state of mind before the surgery was very peaceful. I wanted this surgery. This is something that I was excited to do. It's not like something that was for health reasons, that was anxiety inducing. This was really um, something that I had wanted. So I was just more excited about the surgery than anything. I couldn't wait to get it done and, uh, and I couldn't wait to see the results. On the morning of the surgery, I was extremely ready. I remember wearing a very comfortable outfit. I wore sweatpants, I wore um, a button, up shirts, nice comfy, you know, wool blouse because it was in the middle of um, the winter and I didn't want anything I was gonna have to pull over my head to take off. Uh, I wanted something I would be able to button and open. It was much easier. I booked a cab that morning. As I explained in my previous video, if you've watched it, the eight differences that shocked me between the US and France Parking in France is a little bit more complicated and it is stress inducing. I did not want to arrive late at all at the hospital. I didn't want my husband to have to fight to find parking. So I told him, because we also had two kids to drop off at school and at daycare, I told him that I was just gonna take a cab so that he would be able to wake up at the normal time with the kids, bring him to school. There was no stress, no logistics to deal with. But the cab came to pick me up. I had a very nice conversation conversation with him, which kind of made me think of other things before the surgery because no matter what it is, even if it's a plastic surgery or anything, there is a little bit of stress that morning. You're going under the knife, so it's not a very pleasant thought. When I arrived at the clinic, um, I was able to go directly to the building that I knew my surgery was going to be in. I had to pay uh, the clinic fees, which were 480 euros. 
So I paid that right away so that once my surgery was done, I was going to be able to go directly to the room where you wake up, you know, you just uh, relax until somebody comes and picks you up. A nurse came to get me after about 20 minutes of waiting in the waiting room. She brought me up to the room where she made me change. So I was pretty much in a gown with no clothes on and just like this paper underwear that they give you. Everything is completely sterile. And I forgot to mention that the night before I had to take a shower with this red like sterile soap that they give you. It's a different name. In French, it's called betadine. Uh, it's red, so you're pretty much like orange when you get out of the shower. It's pretty gross and it smells really weird, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I had taken that shower the night before, so I was still a little orange in the nightgown, in the paper nightgown and paper underwear. So I was ready. They also tied my hair, put one of those paper um, hats on, and I was wheeled down to the surgery room. The surgeon that I had chose for this surgery was a young surgeon. He was extremely nice, extremely reassuring. I was happy to have a younger surgeon just because I felt like he was more aware of the trends and what was going on with younger people and the surgeries like that. And this could be completely like in my head, um, because I'm sure that older surgeons are very much aware of what's going on as well. But I was just a little bit more reassured to have a younger surgeon because I felt like he would maybe understand me a little bit better and um, the reasons I was doing this surgery because immediately when I had told him this, he told me, so when you put on makeup, you pretty much can't see your makeup. And I was like, yes, that's exactly it. You can't even see my makeup. And I just felt like somebody younger could understand that right away and we could see a little bit more eye to eye. Like I said, this was probably all in my mind. It was just something that reassured me. <laughs> when the surgeon walked in that room uh, with the anesthesiologist that I had met prior to my surgery, I just felt a weight lift off my shoulder. I was so reassured to see him. He was had such a reassuring speech and smile and told me, don't worry, you're gonna be great after this. I can't wait to see the result. It's gonna be amazing. So I was just so pumped. Now, for this surgery, your surgeon can decide to do one of two things. Either they can do a local anesthesia. Local anesthesia, because you're getting surgery in the eye region, is not fun. They're pretty much gonna be injecting around your eyes, into your eyelids, and honestly, that scared me so bad. I was very lucky that my surgeon did the other way, which was much better for me. A lot of people would not like this, but I was completely reassured by it. He pretty much did a general anesthesia, a very short general anesthesia. So I was under for about 10 minutes. That way he could give me the local anesthesia while I was completely sleeping. So I didn't have to feel any of the shots or anything. And then I would slowly wake up during the procedure. When he explained this to me, I was reassured because I wouldn't have to feel the injections, but I was completely panicked because I said, well, when I wake up, you're gonna be in the middle of cutting my eyelids. And what if I freak out? He said, that's not gonna happen because you're gonna wake up very gently and you're gonna be so groggy. You're not really gonna know where you are. And that is literally exactly what happened. When they put me under general anesthesia, it was very fast. They made sure I was nice and warm. They take really good care of you in these rooms. They pretty much uh, told me to count to like, I don't know, five backwards and I was gone by like two. When I woke up, I remember it wasn't like, you wake up like that. It's you're just opening your eyes a little bit and and it wasn't a problem that my eyelids were opening. He needed me to be awake for my eyes to be open. Before they started cutting, they had to wait for me to open my eyes. But when I did open my eyes, I was awake, but my, let's say my soul was not because my eyes were open, but I was still in like this complete daze where right now I can't even really remember 
the surgery and it went extremely fast once my eyes were open and they started uh, cutting into me honestly i didn't feel anything and i had no notion of time once i woke up from the general anesthesia they were working on me for about 30 minutes but honestly i don't remember anything of those 30 minutes when the surgery was done they pretty much only put like just bandages around they wheeled me back up to my room and I sat in my room for a little while. So I took a few pictures, sent some pictures to my colleagues saying, hey, everything's okay. I put a filter on the picture I sent to my colleagues because I didn't want it to be too bloody or shocking or anything like that. But I felt relatively good. I was excited to get out of there. Of course, my doctor came to see me. He um, gave the okay for me to leave and I was able to walk out of there no problem. I remember the only feeling I had was that it was just kind of pulling. For those of you who have gotten stitches before, you know that feeling where the stitching just kind of feels like it's pulling a little bit on your skin at first. That was the only feeling I had, but I didn't have any pain or anything. Once I got home, I laid down in my bed and I remember that's when the slight pain started. I can't say it was really a pain. It was more like a feeling of being extremely uncomfortable. First of all, you can't close your eyes all the way at the beginning because you're a little swollen. What's left of your eyelids is swelling up and it's not enough to cover your eye completely. So your eye is not going to be shut completely, which is a very bizarre feeling. So I had drops to put in my eyes. I had several different things. I had uh, vitamin A drops to put in. I also had this disinfecting slash antibiotic gel that I would put in my eye. Imagine squeezing a fine line of petroleum jelly on your lower um, inside of your eyelid and then closing your eye and that petroleum jelly is pretty much spreading over your eyes and it's just like blur, complete blur. I couldn't see anything. I had to put that in my eyes three times a day. I had medication to take, I had ibuprofen, I had so many meds to take. Thank God my husband was there and he was taking really good care of me. He was the one giving me my meds. I think he actually worked from home for like the first um, like two days of my recovery just to make sure I was getting my meds because once I would put that gel in my eyes, I was blind as a bat. I couldn't see anything. It was nice, you know, I would just listen to podcasts, audiobooks. Uh, I slept a lot because the meds I was taking was kind of like knocking me out too. I had pain meds. Because I was taking pain meds so like regularly, I was just taking them as they told me to take them. I wasn't testing my luck or anything. So I kind of like um, slid through the net of the pain because I was just covered for the whole time. The redness and the swelling really started, I would say about two days after. My eyelids were red. Like it was insane. I had never seen a shade of red so red like that. Of course, my eyelids had gone through trauma. So they were red and then I started getting swelling. Then I got bruising under the eyes. Uh, I remember I had bruising in the corner here for a little while. I was taking my homeopathy, so I knew that that was gonna help. I just needed this redness to go away. The bruising, I mean, it was it was a little weird. Obviously, you know you're gonna get the, this kind of thing after a surgery like this, but it was pretty intense. And I had to go back to work. I think I had taken off maybe a week and I really didn't want to go back to work looking like a crazy person. Oh, I was hoping all of this was going to die down extremely fast. Unfortunately for me, it did not. It took extremely long to heal for the redness and the swelling and the bruising. I had watched a few videos on YouTube prior uh, to my surgery on this uh, blepharoplasty to see how bad the swelling was after and how long it would take to recover just so I had an idea of when I would be able to go back to work. And on most of these videos, some of the girls, like a week later, they the, the redness was completely gone. It looked like almost they had little makeup on, but nothing crazy. For me, I don't know what why my skin was not <laughs> cooperating at all because nothing was going down at all. And I was getting so worried because my I was gonna have to go back to work, but 
I wasn't allowed to put on makeup because after the surgery, you cannot put makeup on for I think three weeks. So I was gonna have to go back to work looking like a psycho person. Of course, I had only told my very close colleagues I was getting this done. I had told nobody else in the company. You know, I was really nervous of going back. So I decided when I had to go back that I was just gonna wear sunglasses inside and to not have to go through the whole explanation of what I had done. Because whenever you get plastic surgery, I feel like you don't wanna be like screaming it on all the roofs. Today, I can talk about it and I'm glad to talk about it because I know how desperate I was looking for videos of advice and experiences of people. So I'm glad to talk about it today. But once you've just done it, you don't really want to uh, go out and, and announce it to everybody. You know, you kind of want it to be something discreet and uh, I had only my close colleagues that are aware. I was going through this healing process um, it wasn't painful at all anymore. My eyelids had come back to their normal size, not their normal shade, <laughs> but at least their normal size where I could actually close my eyes. That actually came back pretty fast. I think like within the third or fourth day, I could already close my eyes, but it was it would just pull a little bit more. When you get this surgery, you have to get the sutures removed five days after because they don't want them leaving like uh, this indentation in your eyelid uh, and because the sutures are going smack through the middle of your eyelid it's extremely uncomfortable so they get rid of them really quickly so that everything else can heal and they can see if there's no infection or anything so I was glad that that was five days later because it gave me a semi-normal aspect and we were already able to see uh, the first results it was so strange because I could literally feel less weight on my eyes. My eyes felt lighter. I felt like when they were open, there was more of a, of a strength that was straining my eyes for my eyelids to be open. And it's something that I had not even noticed prior to getting the surgery. But after getting the surgery, I noticed how light my eyes felt and how much more open they felt. Just to give you an idea, of how much eyelid my surgeon took off. When he told me this, I was shocked. He took off six square centimeters, okay? This is my this is my eye. This is six square centimeters. It pretty much consists of an entire eyelid. That's how much he took off of my eyelid for both. So that's how much excess skin I had. I actually had asked him if it was possible to donate the skin. Um, for people who, you know, were burn victims or, you know, any amount of skin, I guess, can help. And he said because the process was so complicated, there was so much paperwork, and for such little amount, it really wasn't worth it. It was something that would have delayed the surgery a few months. So, you know, because he said for this amount, it's really not worth it, or else he would have actually suggested it to me. So we didn't go and do that. But um, originally, I would have liked to do that. I had no problems or complications during my recovery process. The only thing that happened was three weeks after my surgery, I woke up one morning and I literally had a bump sticking out of my eyeball, a yellow bump. I'm going to show you the picture. It's really ugly, so brace yourself, trigger warning. So this is what um, it looked like. So this is really like a very, very close up. I was trying to get a good picture of it because my husband's father is a doctor, so I wanted to send it to him first for him maybe to tell me like it could be this or you have to go straight to the emergency room. I didn't know what it was. And he told me that I was probably going to need antibiotics, so I rushed over to the doctor. After, you know, consult, he indeed told me that I had an infection in my eye. I took antibiotics. It was gone within like, you know, the the next like 48 hours, it was gone. Thank goodness it wasn't that bad. But I did experience a lot of pink eye after my surgery. So let's say starting a month after my surgery, I think I would get pink eye about once every two weeks almost. I was always getting eye infections. My eyes were, you know, were pink and just, um, always watery and with pus and it was not fun. I would get that pretty often. 
That lasted about two to three months. I believe it's because my eyes now were less protected by the excess amount of eyelid that I had. When I started putting makeup back on, um, I didn't have as much eyelid to protect my eye with. And maybe I think, I feel like this is probably what was happening. The makeup was just getting into my eyes. When they pull everything, your tear ducts are a little bit more exposed. So you can get you know, more dust and more dirt in there. By the time I learned how to properly put makeup on again, because your eye shape changes, you get an entire lift. Even my eyelashes were lifted. Before, you couldn't see my eyelashes. They would go straight down. Now, my eyelashes curl up because everything has just been lifted. So when I started putting makeup back on again, it was like discovering an, a new eye to put makeup on. I did not know how to put makeup on again. I, first of all, I hadn't put makeup on in three weeks, so I kind of lost touch with it. And when I started doing it again, it did not look the same as when I would put my makeup on before. So that was really interesting. And I got to try uh, new uh, makeup techniques with my eyes. So that was kind of fun. I did take before and after pictures. Unfortunately, I was not able to get the ones that the doctor had taken. I had not specifically taken any because I thought I was just gonna be able to get the doctor's ones. He showed them to me, but never actually printed them out and gave them to me. I did I did uh, take a picture before my surgery, thank goodness. I took a picture very recently so you can see the difference. I would say my eyes settled, stopped moving, got their normal color back, and all the bruising was gone. I looked normal again about two months after the surgery. The swelling and, and uh, bruising was gone uh, less than a month after, but the redness on the eyelids lasted a good two months. I didn't know if it was ever gonna leave. I was really worried. I have a before and after picture with no makeup that you can see. So you see uh, definitely there's a difference between the height, between the eyelashes and the eyebrow, and you can see the mobile um, eyelid much better. It's much more fun to put makeup on because now you can actually see it. And you also see the difference in my eyelashes. My eyelashes going down and then my eyelashes curling a little bit more uh, towards the top. You can definitely tell in the, uh, the after picture that my eyes just look a little bit more present. I also have a before and after picture with makeup. So unfortunately, I did not have like a very clear picture of before with makeup because I had never taken such a close up of my face. I'm not a big like selfie person, so I don't have all these selfies of my face. I was able to do a screenshot from a video that I had made for my kids when they were at their grandparents' house. I had made a little video talking to them. So I was able to get a screenshot from that, but that's all I could find to be able to do the before and after with makeup. And as you can see on the picture of before, you barely can tell I have makeup on my eyes because my eyelids are just covering my entire mobile um, eyelid. On the second picture, you can actually see my eyeshadow and you can see that my eyelashes look a little bit more full, a little bit more curled. Even though they do have mascara on them, you see, definitely see the difference between the first picture and the second picture. My colleagues even told me that after my surgery, they started noticing the color of my eyes much better. They all told me, wow, we didn't realize how green your eyes were before. It's impressive the difference that it just makes on your face. I was just so happy to get such positive feedback from everybody. For the cost of this entire procedure, I paid 500 euros to the clinic that I was getting the surgery at. I paid 600 euros to the anesthesiologist and I paid 1200 to my surgeon, which comes out to a total of 2,300 euros. Considering all of this, the surgery, the time of recovery, the cost, the risks, am I happy today that I did this surgery? I am absolutely happy I did this surgery. Even though the recovery was a little bit longer than I had anticipated, I am so happy. I felt like my face had changed a little bit. For other people, it will be a very subtle change. It will be something that they will say, oh, well, she looks, 
you know, she looks better today than yesterday. For you that knows your face so well, that's lived with this face, these eyes your entire life, it's a huge change. You feel like the shape of your eyes have changed, the shape of your face have changed, the shape of your eyebrows have changed. So it's, it's amazing because it's such a small procedure and I can't even speak of the people who have gone through upper and lower eyelids. I can't imagine the amount of change that must be for them too. That must be amazing as well. If you're feeling self-conscious about your eyelids, I feel like with age, they just naturally droop. And it's also genetic. My father has eyelids that um, droop down a little bit. So I knew that it was in my genes. And if I didn't do anything about it, I would probably have, you know, the eyelids covering my eyes at some point. So for anybody that's thinking about getting this surgery done, I personally recommend it because I am just so happy with the results that I've had and I feel like the experience was not at all a traumatic experience. I had a wonderful surgeon. I did it in very nice conditions. So I would definitely recommend it if your eyelids are something that you're a little self-conscious about. The scar is barely visible. You can't even see it. When I close my eyes, um, there's really nothing to see. Because it's in a crease, you can't even really notice it's there. So thank you so much for being here for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that um, my little story will be able to uh, reassure you that it is a great surgery. And I wish you all the best. I will see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye.